You know, I gotta say, it's hard to have a kid in the house that took fashion design. It, it's tough because my thinking is, if it fits, if it's comfortable, then it's fair game to wear. Uh, matching, ah, man, that's secondary. I mean, I think this looks pretty good. It kind of matches, right? Uh, and, and stylish, what does that even mean? Funny that we judge a person by how they look on the outside, don't we? You know, uh, we had a neighbor years ago. He, uh, uh, he used to walk up and down the street, and he would wear mismatched clothing, and he would wear different colored gloves and stuff. And, and many times when I, I came back from my run, I would, uh, I would stop and I would chat with him. And, and uh, he was a little bit eccentric. He was a yodeler, actually. He would, uh, um, he would yodel to me in the middle of the street. And, and uh, you would look at him and you go, uh, okay. But he was also a multimillionaire. And it's interesting because, again, when we look at the outside, we can come to conclusions that may not necessarily be correct. And uh, so we really do need to judge not people by the outside, uh, but we need to look on the inside. And we really look, need to look at ourselves on the inside as well. That's what Peter was talking about here in today's scripture. First Peter chapter 1, verse 17 says this, Since you call on a father who judges each man's in, works impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. I love the idea of God as Father. I love the fact that He's a caring, heavenly Father uh, that looks out for our best interests. And we, we love that about Him. But there's another side to God that we cannot forget. And that side is that He is a holy God, a, a, a upright God, um, one that is morally pure. And He expects the same from us. He expects us to have a same type of attitude towards sin. See, here's the thing. Many times we kind of we kind of overlook sin and we don't think it's such a big deal. But see, to God it's a very, very big deal. It was sin, after all, that slammed his son on the cross. Someone once said, years of obedience cannot purchase an hour of disobedience. We are called to live in purity. We are called to live a life that honors God because he cannot tolerate sin. Sin. And that doesn't mean just that we do most of the time we honor God. And those off, those off times we dishonor Him. No, no. It means we live on a consistent basis. Peter says, since you call on a father who judges each man's work. See, we call on a loving father in our need, but we also call it on a loving father who sees how we work out, how we live out our lives. It's interesting, the COVID thing, how people are living out what they really think and how they are expressing what's deep down inside. I, uh, uh, I love Natalie Grant and Bernie Harms, and if you don't know them, they're singers. They, uh, Bernie is an incredible pianist. Uh, actually, I grew up with him. And uh, what they have done is they have done nightly songs of encouragement from their homes. What's inside is showing on how they express themselves on the outside. Take that and you look at another singer, some of you may know by the name of Britney Spears, who not so long ago came out by saying that uh, she had burnt down her, her gym in, uh, by being careless with some candles. And uh, uh, it shows you the difference in attitude the way a person thinks and the way a person acts. See, God sees our exterior. He sees what's deep down in our heart, but he also sees how we acted out out there in our lives. I'm wondering, how are we how are we living our lives? See, because the scripture says here that God will judge each man impartially. See, one day we will stand before what is known as the judgment seat of Christ. And God will examine our works, not to condemn us, but to see how they glorified Him and to reward us accordingly. And I hope that we are living in a way that honors Him and glorifies Him. Romans chapter 2, verse 6 says, God will give to each person according to what He has done. So Peter says here, 
Live your lives as strangers here on on this earth in reverent fear. Don't be strange, but realize you're just passing through. Don't get too caught up on this things of this world, but realize we've got to walk with our thoughts upon our heavenly home. And and the important is thing here is live in reverent fear. Reverent fear of God, meaning respect and awe and honor of Him. I, I, I cringe when people call God the man upstairs, or I heard of one baseball player that called God the great Yankee in the sky. In the Old Testament, God was so revered, the name of God was so revered that the Jews wouldn't even, re, wouldn't even say His name out loud because he was revered so highly we need to have that same reverence for him as well folks live in a way that honors him let your your actions express what's deep down inside Paul says in Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 whatever you do whether in word or deed do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him let's practice that today as we go through our day so father thank you for today thank you for your people thank you that you see our works thank you you see our lives help us to live in a way that pleases you that honors you that brings attention to you today and we ask all this in jesus name amen god bless you have a great weekend we will see you sunday morning here at 11 o'clock